All right, so let's see here. In substance, in fact, called the Temple of Sinitha, C, being pronounced like S, and thus making the Temple of Sin, or Sinai, which will be ex explained in the Book of Letters. Lord Kingsburg, Burl, Bergs, yeah, Bergs, and that's uh, that's the character that I, I uh, also mentioned, uh, which just reminds us of the. Uh, I need to look into him because he's mentioned in that book, The Shadow of Atlantis. Um, remember, I, I bought the book uh, because I wanted to find where um, it's stated that how was it? Um, one of the uh, interpreters wrote for Christopher Columbus that uh, when he wanted to send interpreters to speak to the inhabitants of the West Indies, he sent interpreters that spoke Hebrew, Arabic, and Chaldean. Now, I bought the book, and I'm not sure if I have the right one or if I have the right uh, edition, um, because I'm almost positive, and when I downloaded the PDF, it stated what I was looking for, but when I bought the book, it did not mention that quote at all. Um, I got it from that video where uh, they put together a compilation of different saint, uh, quotes that uh, we were always here. Um, it was strike. It was taken down. Um, I remember it was um, Jonas Bay who read these certain books because, like, I, I bought the book he mentioned, uh, "Songs of the Earth," where they says. Uh, where uh, I forget the tribe, it's in Washington State, but they said that we're black, uh, you're white. When you cut us, we bleed. Don't we bleed uh, red just like you? Uh, when we speak, you do not understand us. When you speak, we do not understand you. That whole thing. Um, and some of the books he had mentioned that I could find, uh, they actually, but that book, The Shadow of Atlantis, didn't mention what the quote that I was looking for because I thought that was, that, was, uh, that was a home run. But that guy, uh, Lord Kingsborough, um, he mentions, he's quoted a lot. Uh, he's the one who has the, the most interesting quotes in that book, The Shadow of Atlantis, the, at least what the book that I bought that talks about uh, the comparisons between the inhabitants of Mexico, not just the West Indies, having traditions of the Jews. So uh, bear with me for a moment. All right, so calls it Sinai or Sina. I feel little doubt that one of the first names of God in the first written language for reasons uh, which, which I shall give when I explain the origin of the letters in all nation languages and times would be D. Divis, with its variants of forms. The next, perhaps, would be descriptive of 360. Now, remember, this is, um, oh, I forgot to mention, this is the reading from Godfrey Higgins' book, uh, An Eclipsic, Volume 1. Um, he teaches in this book that the Asiatic, the Afro-Asiatic, the curly-haired Buddha um, would have been well-versed in algebra. Not, oh, whoa, whoa, I misspoke. I knew I was going to do that. Sorry, not algebra, but calculus. That um, it was one of the studies that we had mastered. Um, so when he puts this in these formats, you know, think of it as, as a calculus equation. Okay. Um, 360. Let's see. This might be described, oh, I already, yeah, oh, in, various, in various ways as TLI, T300, 
L 50 I 10 equaling 360. The meaning of the three of these three numbers would be the glorious ord, which, hold on, let me make sure I had that right. Let me make sure I had that right. Yeah, orb, I think that's right. Um, where was I? We daily, we daily behold the sun and God for reasons which I shall assign I suppose D was the first and the prevailing name of God during many generations. Afterwards, the astronomy so much improved that the knowledge of Niels, Niels, like, uh, was it the, isn't that the, um, what's the house? Um, uh, Rome, right? Niels of 650 was a, acquired the name TTL 650 650 was adopted as his name and we have it in Mexico this is where I wanted. This is why I wanted to do this, because um, it picks up here uh, in Mexico, where let's see, where figures were known, but not not uh, not syllabic letters. Syllabic letters. Um, uh, what was syllabic? Syllabic was a system of symbolism. Uh, symbolisms. Excuse me. In the name of the deity, Teotl, the periods shown how far at the time in which they branched off from Asia, right? Um, because God Higgins explains that, um, that the Buddhist would have been, and he's, and he, this is his words, not mine, the curly-haired Buddhists, they were the priest that if you wanted to enter into Europe, um, you had to take, you had to approach these Buddhists and ask them to be the leader to lead them into Europe, which explains why um, when you look at certain periods, um, how was that? I forget how it went. Um, uh, what was it? It will come back to me. But you had to have a Buddhist priest, to basically, from what he's teaching, to go into certain parts of the world, to take your people in there, to settle. They were the negotiators, and they were um, they were the priests that would negotiate and, and do rituals and things of that nature. Like he teaches, it's in the earlier part of this book, that, um, what was his name? They were, they were the, the uh, Druids. They were the original Druids. They were the ones that built Stonehenge which takes away all the mystery from, oh, who built Stonehenge? We don't know. Well, he says right here, oh, well, it was actually built by these curly-haired, uh, thick-lipped, um, dark melanin hues people. And that's why you don't know, because you're hiding who they are. Which then goes into something that Lex had taught. Look at, uh, look at the, the history of, of trees and plants and, and the names and stuff like that, which we are supposed to know. Like, like, what are these people that pretend to be Druids? All, oh, there's uh, tree huggers and stuff like that. They're supposed to know all the trees, who's the king of the trees, who's the queen of the trees, you know, so on and so forth. Like, I, I was shocked when I started looking up uh, the creator's name and looking for trees and found there's a portion of them down there in, um, was it, uh, near Guatemala in Belize. In Belize and in Guatemala, and, and, and it's literally the Hayahaya tree. And who settled there? The Mayans. And it's like, uh, what was it? What, what, what was the, one of the things I thought was crazy? When you read the book of Maccabees, it says the, at the end, the last son of the Maccabees built seven pyramids, one for his father, his mother, all of his brothers that were slain, and including himself. And it says that these seven pyramids can be seen from the shore. Well, Go search for seven pyramids. 
Go search from seven pyramids that can be seen from the shore, the coastline, wherever. You're not going to find them over there in uh, the Persian Gulf. You're not going to find them over there in Asia. You're going to find them, in my opinion, in Central America and in Belize and places like that, where from the Gulf of Mexico, there are pyramids. Some of the pyramids are now on islands because of the water rising. I don't know. The face of the earth has changed, I guess. The surface of the earth. But there are seven pyramids that, can be, that, are, that are along the coastline. And then you look at the Mayans and how much the Mayans resemble the Israelites. So let's see. Um, <clears throat> the knowledge of the system had extended their, their period from the creation to Christ <clears throat> of 5,200 years. Embrace the eighth ages of their cycle. And you see, I was, I'm specifically trying to find the portion of this book where it talks about this, this cycle that here of 360, three, uh, 600, um, 350. He explains that this cycle it, it has connected to the stars and that it's the pouring out of what is trapped in the stars to reincarnate themselves into babies that are being born during this time period, which now having a little bit of understanding of, of um, sex magic and what that ritual is about, it starts to line up and starts to make sense, especially when you see it in movies like the Ghostbuster, right, where the painting during, you know, with the towers that they built on top of the, the hotel or whatever and whatnot, um, the painting holding the spirit being the gateway to allow at that certain time its spirit to come into the child, right, and take over. And where you see that now all the time, in different aspects of where they try to show you that this is what they're doing and this is what they're waiting on and planning. Let's see. Their TTL, Takato, equals 650 times 8 equals 5,200, corresponding with the period of Eusebius. In, let's see, in what? In India, the name, what was it, 360, fell into disuse and was lost and was probably superseded by the words Titalu, six, six, and six. T T L six fifty plus I U or I U equals sixteen six six six. And and at last by the number now used T T equaling six hundred. I know not how I could have invented anything more in more in accordance with my theory than that this Mexican god should have his oh, peculiar appointed name. Had I set my vow, my my rights, I'm sorry, to work for the perhaps perhaps of invention. Invention. Yeah, invention. Oh my goodness. In inventing. Teatro signifies 
in the Mexican language, both the sun and an age, and the image of the sun surrounding, surrounded with rays was the symbol of the letter. And I think this is supposed to be, hold on. I think this is supposed to be the letter right here, but I cannot tell. So, uh, Mr. Fred Slagle, Slagle has observed that the word, um, let's see, at or uh, at Lil is found in in the languages of the east of Europe that it means water and and uh, let's see that it symbols has found its way into the Greek let's see the Greek alphabet and the letter mim mim uh, yeah. yeah, man. Undulating shape by which water is meant, M. That it is also in the Phoenician in most Western nations. Oh, let's see here. It is in the Estotland of Greenland, which is I suspect Diana Estothel, and I also suspect that it is the symbol of the center letter and of, wa of water because it is the symbol of fluid of many kind. I think this leads to the meaning of, of our word land. Elanyadi, I think I pronounced it right, the holy country. Seven. Most all persons who have written respectively, respecting the Mexicans have ob observed the similarity of their language to that of Hebrews. This and many other strange things the monks admit most unwillingly and a tribute to the devil. Now, pause for a moment. I remember Vincent asking this question, or he was asking this question, but it was a statement as well. Um, you ever look around the United States and see how many things they call devil this, devil that? Um, was it Devil's Hills in Washington that comes to mind right away? Devil's Canyon, things of that nature. Until I read this, I had no answer for it. It was like, um, why would, you know, like he always says, why would they come here and just call everything the devil? And this, to me, would explain something if we can find more evidence. That if it had something to do with connection to Hebrew, was it called the devil to cover it up? Because you can almost see this pattern that to the invading people to cover up what they've done, they're invading, you're the enemy to them, and to cover up what you've had and what, you, and what they're taking, they don't want to call it what, it what it would have been historically because they don't want to leave any traces of what they've done. But to remind those who would know 
to look for this specific word, they call it something like this, the devil, the devil's canyon. I mean, look at Mississippi, right, with the, uh, with the, the devil's peach bowl. And look what they did there. I know you say, oh, well, that defeats the purpose of it being connected to the Hebrews. I'm just saying it's a thought process. It is unique that they would call all these different places the devil. So here they're stating, again, that the monks, which I always say what? Go and get the Spanish writings. Go and get the Jesuit writings if you can. Look where the Jesuits led the French army and other armies. Because you're going to find there, they knew exactly what they were looking for. And you've got to be able to look around the editing of the version of their voyage to be able to see why they were looking for this. Like when you start a journey, um, when you read that the Spanish, was it the Spanish started their journey in Florida to search for the West Coast because they knew that the West Coast had cities that were built. How do they know there were cities already built in the West Coast is in the question. And you almost forget it when you start to read through the journey that this is what they're going for. But how would they have to obtain that information so they knew that their quest was not a waste of time? Let's see, pause. Las Casas said that the language of Saint Domingo was corrupt